My name is Frank Perez. I was born in 1925, and I currently reside in Galveston, and I'm still living here in Galveston. And when I worked here, I lived in Galveston. And when I left, I still came over here and visited and resided on Galveston Island from one end to the other. I would come in here once in a while just to uh, uh, see what was going on. I was here, uh, I, okay, I come to work in uh, uh, August 1948 or 49 or something like that. And uh, I knew a couple of the guys that uh, worked here and uh, they were getting ready to leave and when they left, then I came. And I've been with the railroad since that day until 19, uh, 1958. Uh, it was six years after I came here. So my first day at the, at the uh, controller tower, A, tower 30 system Galveston, my first day I was hired. I came on at uh, three o'clock and I would be leaving at 11 o'clock. Anyway, uh, I was up in the tower waiting for my first movements from from A to B and C and all that. And, uh, uh, and all of a sudden, it came on at one time. Man, I was a nervous wreck. And, uh, and the trains were on the way in and they all blown their signals, and I knew all the signals, the, a gang of signals, and each signal, uh, the brakeman or the engineer or the leader of that particular train, he would tell me when to stop talking or, uh, or clear the cars, we get ready to move them or make sure Nobody could get hurt uh, when they was getting ready to make all these movements. I, I said, that, that's it, I'm through, I'm, I'm going home. And and uh, I'm getting out of here, out of the railroad uh, place here, I'm getting out of here. And the guy says, no, wait a minute, if the phone is ringing. And, uh, and a guy called me from the uh, Galveston Tower, located at the uh, entrance of Galveston Island. Uh, they, we had towers, three towers, and this this was the one closest to town right here. And so, anyway, I, I walked out, and they stopped me, and the guy said, where you going? I said, I'm getting out of here. Uh, it's just too much for me. And I, he said, no, go back, and and uh, you got about a half a dozen trains waiting out there to get through the tower section, and you need it. So calm down and take one train at a time, and, uh, and that way you can uh, get back to normal, hopefully. And well, that's what I did. I took one train at a time, and they crisscrossed all over this place, and I'm the one that was giving them the signal when to go and when to move. And uh, the brakeman and, and and the engineer, I knew them, and, uh, uh, well, I didn't really know them that well. Uh, they, they were new to me. And uh, so anyway, I listened to them, and uh, gradually I got out of uh, uh, the, the, my first day of work. And boy, I was sweating and uh, uh, a nervous wreck. I went to the corner to, to get on the bus to go home. And I had to walk from the tower area all the way to 26, uh, 14th and M. That's where I lived, and I walked that far. Uh, I didn't have a car. It was all walking, and so that 
I did my walking back and forth. I got used to it, and I'm glad I did. It kept me in shape. No, I wasn't prepared for no first day like I had. It was shocking when when I when I went through all that. I ran to uh, from 26th Street and H, or what is it, 26th and G. I ran all the way to 31st and Market to catch the bus. I mean the streetcar at that time, and the guy says, "What do you want?" And and I couldn't even I couldn't remember where I was. I I, I was totally confused from my from my work and. Uh, I finally came to, and I was able to, to uh, think. And now that nobody was behind me pushing me, the whist trains blowing their whistles to get on the special tracks around here. Uh, and I was the tower operator. Okay, I had to learn all the codes from all the trains that we had coming through here. Uh, the passenger trains, the Santa Fe, Passenger train, Southern Pacific train, uh, Santa Fe train, Rock Island, uh, uh, 40, 50 car assembled uh, to come through here to pass to go to Pier 9, uh, down there on the wharf, uh, the banana boat uh, stuff that they had for them, and they had to come through the Tower A. Yeah. I learned while I was on a job, uh, uh, because when I got here, I didn't know nothing about railroad. I played on the railroad track as a kid. I only lived two blocks from here. I lived on 27th and then. That was before I was married. And I used to love to come down here to watch the, the trains run back and forth and blow their whistles and all that. I had no idea that all that I heard was signals and had no idea that I was going to do that for a living. And uh, I don't know, it kind of stuck with me. And so uh, uh, that's how I ended up working for the railroad. Uh, first working in a warehouse near the tracks and then watching the big steam engines puff along the the roadway next to our little cafe there on 20th and um, 20th and Avenue A. I uh, had no idea I'd be working for uh, uh, the railroad, and uh, the next thing you know, I was working for them, and and then I could see everything that uh, <laughs> I didn't want to fool with, but I learned how to do all of the. All the movements that it took to be a railroad uh, operator for the railroad. And they made sure that I better be on the right track because if I wasn't, I wouldn't have a job anymore. Oh, yeah, yeah, every now and then in my, in my mind I can hear the whistles. And, uh, oh, yeah, I made sure I could remember those missiles, uh, whistles. That was very important. Uh, without knowing the whistles, I had no idea what track they wanted to use. And at that time, we had numerous tracks uh, all the way from here to the causeway and uh, uh, Galveston Causeway. Uh, but I only went to the other tower on 38th Street. That was the Southern Pacific Tower. The one I was working in was the gh and H Tower in Galveston, Texas. <laughs> yeah, yeah, as a matter of fact, every now and then I would hear somebody honking a horn or uh, or somebody coming by and making uh, weird sounds from the trucks and they would remind me of the whistles that I had to, uh, I had to know to put them on the proper track. And if I didn't do that, that I'd, I'd have them running into each other. And uh, so that was a real job. And, uh, but that helped me a lot to do a lot of thinking uh, when I went to work for the railroad. Uh, when I got overwhelmed by a, a, a bunch of trains wanting to move through the Tower A section, uh, which was a large section uh, uh, from here, from 25th all the way to 38th Street, east, east of the 25th Street, and then from... Uh, 
from the Galveston Wharf so all the way up to Avenue G uh, at the most. And uh, we had tracks all over the place. And and I had to remember all that, uh, where the, where the, where the uh, certain spots were, where the trains went uh, to drop their passages, and then the uh, uh, the uh, warehouses where they received their uh, equipment. They, a lot of the trains come through the tower area, and I, I had to switch them through the proper tracks so they could get to the to the warehouses on, on Avenue E and Avenue F, right off of Market Street headed south there and uh, I had to I had to memorize all of that all all the train sounds uh, even the uh, flagmen or uh, uh, watching the garden streets like on 37th Street 35th Street 14th Street uh, flagmen uh, walking ahead of the train and I had to know everybody the engineers the uh, they're switching people, but mainly anybody that went through the tower, they had to go through me, and that was the biggest responsibility of my life, and uh, everything went all right. That was there. They had a lot of uh, freight trains coming in with stuff in there, but luckily I didn't have to do no work over there. The tower was located at 36th in Mechanic, and it was blocked by Falstaff Building, uh, uh, the Galveston Wharf Building on this side. On the west side, uh, a lot of, right along the, that street right outside there, uh, all of that was occupied by goods coming in. And uh, and then on mechanic and uh, Strand and Church Street, that's far. Uh, had a lot of warehouses, and they would unload on the wharf, and then they would tote their stuff and come through here, right outside Twenty Fifth Street, and uh, mostly Thirty uh, Fifth uh, Street. And not only that, we had other other trains that came in, not only the ones that came in here to the railroad museum, uh, they had other little, different little, they call them islands. Uh, Santa Fe had a little little post where the train would stop and the engineers and, uh, and the farmers, they would get off there and they wouldn't come in into to the yard here or anything. They would go from there. They would go to their little office. In those days, they had tracks going all the way into neighborhood on Avenue E and and Avenue F, uh, close to the city. And as time went on, their railroads settled down and got rid of all those neighborhood tracks, except maybe a, a couple of them because they still had to deliver a lot of goods to uh, the, the Army Post and uh, the airfield and the, the Coast Guard Station. Uh, had a lot of military stuff. Word. Well, oh, any time they were in the yard, they was going to blow with their signals. I knew that, and I just had to be ready, and I had to know them. If I didn't know them, they wouldn't have got there. <laughs> That's what happened there. Actually, they were operated by the operator who was at the tower, and that was me there. And when then when the other crewmen came, they had to know the same thing, the movement of all the trains and what tracks, and they had to know the signals too. The Santa Fe uh, uh, train had at, uh, uh, a real bad steam, I mean, a real loud uh, steam engine you could see the steam from from blocks away, and you know he was blowing for the tower. Yeah, they all had a coat, uh, a long and three shorts, and uh, and it would uh, it would make a a noise that would tell you exactly what track they were on. Like for instance, just an idea, da did did did, you knew that 
the main line, or, or maybe do do, or maybe five of them, do 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 do, and, and you would have to know where all that went. Five was gone from the uh, from the main track uh, right into the yard where they clean the engines and and to get them all ready for the next movement and clean all the ca uh, all of the uh, uh, where people sleep and all that kind of stuff. But we didn't do none of that. It house. took me quite a while to learn, and uh, and when you did learn. Uh, we were lucky the the lights on the railroad tracks would automatically turn red. That was a good lifesaver right there. As soon as they goofed up, the light would turn red. And then the tower operator had to find out what caused it and so it wouldn't occur again. And then again, inside of the tower itself, when he threw the switches, uh, the, the switches was big iron, heavy iron to move the switches in the tower. And that's, that's how I went from, uh, from one switch to another switch. And uh, it was just complicated. And if you threw the wrong one, you're going to send him down the wrong track. Okay, Kitty. <laughs> if time for you to go take a break. Come on, Scooter. <laughs> Scooter. <laughs> But we didn't have any animals. We did have a snake, a and nobody went yeah. after him. And the boss told me, he says, Frank, when you catch him, I'll call the dog catch, and they'll come get him. I said, I ain't going after no snake at all. That's your job, not me. I'm not a snake man. I know nothing about snakes. We come back, he was gone. And uh, I wouldn't be a bit surprised he still lives there. Um, oh yeah. Well, when they were ready to roll, they had a signal, and uh, and if I heard it, wherever I was, uh, uh, wherever I was, I had to run out and make sure that they were lined up to the track that they were blowing for. Well, the main line right. for the Santa Fe when they left Galveston was, then I knew. And wherever I was, I had to stop and line up the track to make sure there was no other train on that track so that train could leave. And then when they come in, it's the same thing. Uh, like you said just a few minutes ago, doot, 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 wake up, buddy. Here we come. <laughs> if you don't wake up, we will smash everything. Yeah. Yeah, and we had to be ready. And as soon as we heard it, Go switching the tracks. No, we had a few, uh, 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 a few cars getting hit, and uh, we had the signals, the train signals, semi four they call them, and they would uh, ding a ling a ling a ling a ling, you know, uh, and they, everybody would stop. They wouldn't move until they they got through, or 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 they just. Wanted to watch the train come by. Yeah, I seen him. I didn't see it going on uh, uh, on the ground. Uh, well, I did see one, and uh, I happened to be sitting in the tower, and uh, and here comes the train with about forty something cars. I was in the tower, and uh, he was going to come through the tower, and then back up and go to the various posts where they go and settle down and their crews go to eat and all that kind of stuff. Anyway, I seen this train coming and uh, and I had three main tracks that uh, this guy was headed for and uh, and I jumped out of the tower with a red flag in my hand and uh, and I ran out in front of the train about from here where those cars are parked. And I waving the red flag like this. And that meant stop. Whoever who whoever the engineer was and the fireman stopped. And they stopped about three cars away from the main switch that supplied three main tracks into uh 
the yards here for the passenger trains. I would have delayed it. It would have cost hundreds of dollars. Yeah. And, and I stopped in just in time. Mm -hmm. And then I got called into the office for all that. Oh, yeah, I wasn't there. That, that happened when I came there. It happened before I came to work as a tower operator. And they only done that to test your ability of thinking. What would you do if you, if you, if you heard that somebody was crushed up against the building? I said, well, for one thing, uh, somebody was going fast and jumped the track and hit the side of the tower or or somebody uh, just wasn't thinking and the train kept on going and, it, and one of the cars could have jumped the track and hit the tower. It could have been a bunch of death. Uh, but everything in the tower that made a noise, you had to go check it because if the tower was falling apart, you had to report it instantly. It was no time to the, the think about, ah, I'll tell them about it tomorrow. No, you had to speak up fast. And I had to switch as a break while I'm switching them in the tower. These big switches, you throw them by hand. One of them broke. And it, as soon as it broke, I called in and said, you got a broken switch. No train movements at all until it gets fixed. Immediately. Immediately, same day, they fixed that, that broken track. Uh, that's the way it was done. They had a regular gang that fixed the railroad track. And when they ran the tracks, if they didn't do right, they were gone. Yeah. yeah uh, that's the way it was with the railroad people. Except the people that work in the office, they had it made. I hate to criticize them, but that's the way it went. Uh, putting the trains on the proper track. If you didn't put it on the train, the train or a freight train or passenger train or whatever, if you didn't put it on the proper track, you was either going to have a a big problem. When they ran the red light, they was like when you stop at a stop sign. Right. If you don't obey it, you're going to get hurt. And they knew all that. Yeah, the signal was depending on me. Yeah. I'm the one that gave them the signal. And when they ran the red board that one time, he was headed for three major tracks, the gh and a tracks, to come into the Santa Fe building here. And I stopped him just in time. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, when he made a mistake, of course, he didn't make them. You really didn't. You couldn't afford to because if you did, you wouldn't have a job anymore. And uh, and this these guys ran the 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 red light coming into Galveston, and that's when I jumped out of the railroad tower and ran about four blocks up to meet them. And I had the red flag, and I stopped them about from here to the where the cars are parked, and I stopped the train right there. Uh, <laughs> when you're in the tower, you, you're not supposed to make mistakes. You have to watch the whole time. You cannot be watching TV. Well, we didn't have TV at that time. Uh, radio, we didn't have no radios. Now, even when I see them moving uh, on the walls and they want to cross over there on 33rd Street, yeah. in those days, uh, those trains used to have to stop because they would jump on them. And uh, we had a tower over there too. And when they ran the tower, uh, sometimes you had to go before the courts of the railroad people mm -hmm. to get fired or or find another job or whatever. Uh, yeah, I was lucky. Uh, uh, I was lucky I never got caught in. And you couldn't fall asleep. Uh, that was a no-no in the railroad tower. In no way in the world you're gonna uh, uh, sit up in the tower and fall asleep. Uh, if a big train came in with about 40 or 45 cars, 
they would, that that whole train would have to get through before the yard could be used for other trains. I remember other trains was always a group of trains waiting, waiting to get through. Oh, uh, when I came to work at uh, uh, seven o'clock in the morning, I had to be there till uh, quitting time, three thirty in the afternoon, uh, evening more or less. Yeah, and there's trains. Uh, uh, a lot of trains went through at that time, and then at the same time, half of them had to leave to go get passengers out of wherever they come from and come all the way back into the Union Station. Yeah, I got ready and uh, wrote it down, and uh, got. Uh, and of course, they knew it too, but especially the tower people, they had to know that everything is you know, being able to move through it because if it's broken down somewhere, you didn't have a job anymore. They just got rid of you, and they got somebody else to, to, to work in the tower. <laughs> The best part of the job is when the, the quitting time came and it's time to go home. <laughs> that was a nervous wreck. No? Yeah. You know, like this. All of that stayed in your mind, yeah. But the good thing is when I first, first went to work for the railroad, they threw all the books at me. Each book was about this thick, and I still got them. The real how to how to handle the work at the tower. My wife worked for the railroad, and she had a real good job. And if she'd have stayed, I would be here now, and I'd be in a castle somewhere. And, uh, <laughs> uh, they made very good money. <laughs> the ladies did. They knew how to make the books, how to keep tabs of everything that was going on mm -hmm. with the switchmen with the tower operators, with the maintenance yeah. people. Um, they got good money. They paid them very good. Uh, oh, now they got the computer. Mm -hmm. You won't believe it. That computer system is in uh, Nebraska. They got a big rail yard, railroad yard up there. And they got a giant computer. And they got all of these little cities in Texas, their information is seen instantly right there, miles and miles away from there. If we still had tower here, that tower would always be, the picture would be taken of Tower 36, and uh, they would show you probably coming out and knocking off at the proper quitting time and all that kind of all of that goes in all the way to Nebraska, and it was time to move the trains. They're moved from their office, which is thousands of miles away, because we've got electronics now, and it tells them everything that's going on. Yeah. And if we had a passenger train in Galveston, they would say, well, passenger train is getting ready to leave Galveston at 6 o'clock, and right away, they they could throw their signals, and those signals would reach all the way into Galveston and uh, and tell who's ever watching the uh, deal here yeah. on the island, it's time to change the track. They've got a train leaving now, and oh, we've got a train coming in. Well, yeah, at that time we had these blue jeans. You just mm -hmm. you didn't have to wear no, no, no suit or nothing to indicate that you're a, a railroad man, no. Mm -hmm. They went by what you did, though. Yeah. They knew if you goofed up, they knew who did it. <laughs> Instantly, yeah. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, yeah, you'd be in there by yourself, yeah. Yeah, if some guy tried to knock you on the head or something, uh, you would holler and press a button, and, and all the information would already be going out. Wow. And uh, by the time... It, and that happened a lot of times. Oh, we had no restroom either. That was another bad thing. And yeah. uh, uh, when I first went to work, they had to go to the restroom. And and I and I, uh, I told I told the supervisor, where where is the restroom? He said, there it is. You see it all covered <laughs> by grass. Yeah. And I looked down. I said, that's that's where I'm going to go in a few minutes. 
Well, you uh, you gotta go. You gotta go, right? I said I do. I have to go bad. And I looked down there, and the grass was had had a board with a hole cut in it. Uh. And you sit down. And I said I didn't want to get bit by a snake. Yeah. And I held it till I got home. Now, how I held it, I have no idea. Yeah, yeah I really enjoyed it. Uh, uh, for years, I never thought about it. And now I look back and and uh, I said, thank goodness, I, I did learn a trade of some kind. And uh, at least I have a trade listed. And I was shocked when I heard I made it talked about this place. And there was a lot of do's and don'ts. And there will always be wherever they got a railroad tower. And those people up there in Nebraska that received all these signals instantly, instantly, they got somebody working. Like even here or, uh, or wherever it occurs, there's somebody working instantly. And they get it gone. Nothing is to be left uh, for another day or another week or a month. No, it's got to be fixed now. And that's the way it went. I had uh, a lot of little trains running at uh, at the museum, like here in the office. Mm -hmm. If you look up there on the top, the model train would be running day in and day out. Yeah. And at the same time, they had some a square deal box with wires in it, and you had sound coming, and you could hear uh, railroad music that you prefer to hear and, and keep you comfortable until the passenger train picked you up or you just arrived. Uh, that's what it was for. It also told you if something broke down, uh, it it would say Frank, uh, uh, the, the little tower you had up with all those uh, different towns of problems, uh, it broke down. And I said, oh man, get somebody over there fast. Yeah. Get it all squared away, ready to be used. Yeah, no such thing as looking at it and say, oh, I'll get it tomorrow. No. If I had to do it again, do it, again? it wouldn't be bad working in a railroad tower. Uh, <laughs> it was it was interesting and it was it was fun. And if you did it right, and now with all the help they got with all the electronics and all right. that, it, it's going a lot faster, making it easier for us. Yeah. Well, you got to really like it. A lot of guys don't care to work for uh, railroads. Uh, uh, they don't. They don't like to be told what to do, but there's no such thing at the railroad. Uh-uh. They cannot take it into their own, their own feelings. It's a big responsibility. Whatever you do for the railroad, like anybody working here uh, in the future, and you want to, you want to stay here, and you're learning more. Well, it's good to learn a little about everything, because. They're gonna call you if one goes on the ground. They're gonna call you if somebody gets hit by one of the trains. They're gonna call you if a youngster gets in there and lights uh, 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 electrical wire accidentally trip on one and it pulls from the wall and sets it on fire. If you don't report it immediately, you're in trouble. All of that's watched constantly. Everybody that works here moves back and forth. They see and hear. If you don't report it, it's going to get worse. They still have a tower here and there. I know in, in, in uh, oh, I was in a little town not too long ago, and uh, they still keep one tower in operation, but it's all controlled from Nebraska, Nebraska. by these circuits that they got. Uh, and it saves a lot of time. It's all computerized. Yeah, it, it's reported by computer and instantly goes out for the mechanic. Yeah, if it happened uh, 3,000 miles away, the ne next next few minutes they have people working on stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, everything's got to, just like it is now, on the 
causeway, Galveston Causeway. Yeah. They got a tower there. As mm-hmm. soon as something goes wrong, everybody's notified mm-hmm. instantly. And uh, and right away, there's somebody working. And it's a big responsibility. But if it's fun and you like railroading, you'd be surprised. Yeah. There's a lot of people like railroading.